Over time, I ain't taking no breaks. Pray to God, let us all in the gates. Had to get my pride, never live a lie. Level number nine, bitch, I wanted to grace in my the dime. She be taking the time with her makeup. She be making a slate. Free my mind, I was searching for purpose and work. A little nigga, don't play with your fate. Ain't no debate, I'm the best. Bitch. Yo, go ahead, leave a like down below. Go ahead and subscribe if you have not. I'm telling you right now, you're gonna like the video. So you might as well just go ahead and get it out the way. So today, we're gonna listen to Band on the Run. By Paul McCartney and Wings. What's your favorite kind of wings? I like honey barbecue. Sensation. I like a nice buffalo wing. Sensation. Can't go wrong with a nice buffalo. But nah, let's get into uh, track number one, Band on the Run. Hey, okay. I'm liking this already. Okay, let's switch up. So I really enjoyed that track. Took you on kind of an adventure. It was like so many layers. I like the beginning, middle, and the end of it. I like what he said about if I ever get out of here, thought of giving it all away to a registered charity. I like that idea, man. Like God giving you so much that you give back to his people. I'm not one of those people who tell somebody how to spend their money and you know, oh, if you rich, you need to be doing this. You you have, you literally have the power to. It's your hard earned money. But I do believe in giving back, man. I do believe in, you know, if you got blessings, you give. If you have it to give, I believe in giving. Reads on here, a big hit for McCarty, Ben on the Run, tells a lighthearted story about an incarcerated band who break out of jail. The name is vaguely based on a comment made by George Harrison regarding the current state of Apple Corps and the problems surrounding it. I don't know if that's metaphoric for like, you know how artists don't really like to be tied down by labels. You know, labels nowadays, or even labels back then, were really shady in their dealings with the artists. Taking creative control and taking big portions of the money that these artists bring into the company. Having these, you know, artists sign these messed up deals, you know, out of desperation, you know, because they come from these different backgrounds and stuff like that where they ain't really had nothing. You know, and they don't really know the business side. They just know the music and they just want to put out music, so. And you know, those business people take advantage of that. Any artists out there who are, you know, looking to be signed and stuff like that, man, just make sure y'all read y'all contracts, man. Make sure y'all have somebody that knows a lot about the legal stuff and just knows the the, the whole industry, man, because it does get ugly. But definitely, definitely enjoyed that track. A great track to start off with. Track number two, Jet. Coming in hard. Something. I'm pretty sure y'all know. Comment it down below if y'all know what I'm talking about. Another enjoyable track. I really like the guitar on there. The dun, 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 dun. And then it was like a little part in there. Hold on. Yeah, I'll have to say the guitar on was probably my favorite part on there. Yeah, you know, I like the little, you know, jet. Jet. I made her much later. I like it. At the time of its release, Paul explained that Jet was inspired by a black Labrador puppy he owned. He makes a lot of songs about animals, man. Like, he gets inspired by animals a lot. Didn't he make a couple songs about birds? Though in recent years, he has started claiming it is about a horse or pony. Okay. Regardless, the lyrics are barely relevant to either animal. With Paul conceding that many of the lyrics were a little more than nonsense. I make up so much stuff, it means something to me when I do it and it means something to the record buyer. But if I'm asked to analyze it, I can't really explain what it is. Some have speculated that the song is McCartney's tribute to David Bowie. Paul has never said as much, so it's probably just a coincidence. I can say, you know, uh, as a person, you know, I identify as an artist, I am an artist. I can say like, sometimes you make music and it doesn't really have that deep of a meaning. Um, but people interpret it how they want to interpret it. That's a good thing about art, man. It can be interpreted any way, you know what I mean? Um, that's a good, I guess it's good and bad in that way because some people can take stuff out of context. Like the song that they said that they thought was about Yoko and John when it was really about 
Linda's ex-husband. Track number three, Bluebird. It's funny, I was just talking about how he uh, references a lot of animals and is inspired by a lot of animals. Talk to him, man. Pardon? And it's smooth. And you look back, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. That's my favorite track on here so far. You know, I'm, I'm a fan of, of the, the simpler tracks. Um, and of course, my favorite song so far is the shortest one so far. You know what I mean? It doesn't overstay its welcome. Don't forget, man, I live in the microwave generation. So everything has got to be snappy. Written during a holiday in Jamaica, <clears throat> Paul McCartney used the flight of a bluebird as a metaphor for the power of love to set a person free from mental and physical constraints. I like that. I'm a fan of love, you know? Uh, I feel like all the world's problems can be solved with love. True love for each other, true love for your neighbor. You know what I mean? The love that, that God would give to us, you feel me? Yeah, it's funny, love can solve all the problems, man. And God is love, so. But I definitely, I definitely enjoyed that song, man. My favorite one I hear so far. I'm a bluebird, I'm a bluebird, I'm a bluebird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, McCartney. Might as well competition, no cap. Track number four, Miss Vanderbilt. Oh, you don't know. Oh, come on, bro. Miss Vanderbilt, do I think the thing that I like most on that track is the instrumental. I like the chorus. Hey -ho. And I like the question that he poses. You know, what's the use of worry? That, that's a question that I ask myself a lot. I honestly don't feel like you should worry about anything. You know what I mean? And, is there, and there is a such thing as good worry. But I feel like most of the time, you can't change. You can't change the outcome of something. Or you can't change something. So what's the use of worrying about it? Because, yeah, think about it. If you if an outcome is inevitable, like it's going to happen, should you spend time being upset about it? So now you're upset, and then the outcome is still going to happen. We shouldn't worry. You know what I mean? Like I said, it is good worry. I want to do good on this presentation tomorrow, so I'm gonna put in the work to 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 be good at it. But even that worry can be eliminated by just understanding what you have to do to do it. Cause sometimes like that worry, you know, makes you nervous and then when you're nervous, you don't do as good as, you know what I mean? So definitely enjoyed that track too. Let's get into the next one. Let me roll it. But you roll what, cuz? You talking about that good, good McCartney? You crazy. Okay, they going five for five right now. I know I sound like a broken record, but another enjoyable track. And I like what he said, you know, you give me something, I understand. You gave me love in the palm of my hand. I can't tell you how I feel. My heart is like a wheel. Let me roll it. Let me roll it to you. I like that. I want to tell you, and it's not, and now's the time, I want to tell you that you're going to be mine. Talk to her. Let her know, man. We don't ask for permission. We just take. You, you what? Me? But we do need consent, fellas. Don't forget it. Let Me Roll It was written by McCartney at High Park Farm in Scotland. The titular phase was like the central refrain of the song, Band on the Run, inspired by quotation, by quotation by George Harrison, Let Me Roll It To You with a line, and I'd have you anytime. The opening track in the 1970 album, All Things Must Pass. Hey man, shout out George Harrison, cause that All Things Must Pass go crazy. And I really wanna hear that. Track number six. Memu Memunia Mem Yes sir. Memunia. 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 I like that. The rain comes falling from the sky to fill the stream that fills the sea, and that's where life began for you and me. 
So the next time you see rain, it ain't bad. Don't complain, it rains for you. The next time you see LA rain clouds, don't complain, it rains for you and me. This can be in connection to what I said in the last song about how you shouldn't worry. I'm a person who believes that everything happens for a reason. So when you see those rain clouds, you might look at those rain clouds as like, why? Like, why are these clouds over my life? Why does it have to rain? It's such an inconvenience, blah, blah, blah. But you don't know what that could be doing for you that is good. We're kind of surface level people sometimes. We don't really see deeper than the surface. You know what I mean? Like those rain clouds are filling up the seas, hoping those places that are in droughts. And we need that rain. We, we need that. We need it to water our plants, man. We need growth. Don't always look at things like everything is bad. You know what I mean? And I know we get caught up in that, especially in the time that we're living right now. We have to look at the good. Because that's all we got. If we only focus on the negative things, when are we happy? When can we be happy? Really enjoyed that track. I'm a fan of the message in there. Um, or from what my interpretation of the message is. You know what I mean? Like all the things that I said about, <clears throat> you know, the rain and not really always looking at that as a bad thing. When it be raining, man, I be sleeping good. You feel me? I be sleeping so good. No cap. Uh, meaning safe haven in Arabic. Mamunia was the name of a house in Lagos, Nigeria, the city where much of Wings 1973 album Band on the Run was recorded. Okay. A little little background to this. I like that. Track number seven, no words. That completely aligned with what I was saying. You say that love is everything and what we need the most of. I wish you knew that's just how true my love was. Honestly, man, like I, I completely identify with those lines. I always have the best intentions for everybody. I'm human, so I get in my modes where I'm being selfish or I'm being mean and I'm being, you know, I'm acting out of character, but really, I never mean to hurt anybody. My intentions is always love, man. I love everybody. Like, honestly, I really do. People say that, but like, bro, I really love everybody. <laughs> Denny Lane's first co-writing credit on Wings release, No Words, was written before the release of Red Road Speedway, but wasn't recorded until Ben and Run sessions in the summer of 1973. The basic track was recorded in Lagos, Nigeria, and was completed in 19 in September 1973, following Wings' return to England. The orchestral arrangements were by Tony Biscotti Visconti and were recorded at George Martin's Air Studios in London. Next track, Picasso's Last Words. I really enjoyed that. Another enjoyable track. Picasso's last words was inspired, strangely enough, by Pablo Picasso's last reported words. Dustin Hoffman asked Paul if he could turn them into a song and was delighted when he did. The song was recorded in Lagos at a studio owned by Ginger Baker of Cream. Baker played Tin Can Filled with Gravel on the outro. I like the outro as well. Last track that we got on here is 1985. <laughs> Okay, so that was Paul McCartney and Wings, Band on the Run, and I will say that I thoroughly enjoyed that. There's not one song on here that, you know, I just blatantly disliked. Um, there's obviously songs I like more than others, but um, but this was a solid uh, a solid album, solid project, solid record, whatever you want to call it. Definitely some gems on there. Glad I got to listen to it, man. Uh, I don't remember exactly who suggested this, but, you know, shout out to you, and if you did. I'll pin your comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. If you did, please leave a like down below. Um, send me some more stuff to, to listen to, you know what I mean? We back into the journey. Yeah, make sure y'all go ahead and leave a like down below, man. You know, I work hard on, on these videos, you know what I mean? Some people look at them like, oh, I hate these reaction people. But I, I try not to make these, like, reactions, man. I, I, I try to form my videos to where it's like, we all friends, man. It's like, oh, you giving your friends something to listen to, like some of your favorite music to listen to. You know what I mean? I feel like sharing music is a, is a true is a true bonding 
experience. Uh, so it's like you sharing music with somebody, you view as a friend, and you know they're giving it that full listening and that giving it that attention that you would want somebody to give it. Squad, squad, squad. Gang, gang, gang. It's your boy Nick T. And I'm out this time.